Hello everyone. It's well into November already, and I just realized that I haven't done an arch install yet. So let's make it today. Other YouTubers and this channel have already done plenty of arch installs from scratch. So I've decided to take a big shortcut this time and try to quickly set up a customized GNOME desktop using the latest Kalam installer ISO. It's pretty fantastic, and I'll leave a download link in the description below. Let's boot a KVM with it. So here we go, and let's spin up our Tiano Core based firmware for our KVM. Let's do the uh, Standard install. Welcome to Arch Linux. We're about to be dumped into the Kalam ISO live environment, which is based on XFCE, it seems. Let's configure the display resolution and set it to 1920 by 1080. Hit apply, that looks good. So before we do the actual install, let's take a look and see what our mirror list looks like. So cat slash etc slash pacman.d slash mirror list. As you can see, we've got the world's mirrors here. And uh, so let's do something about that and uh, do a sudo reflector dash dash country us where i am dash dash protocol https dash dash latest five dash dash sort by rate dash dash save to slash at etc slash pacman dot d slash mirror list and hit return and let's see what it did. Ah, yes. So we've got the uh, latest five servers, uh, mirrors, uh, sorted by uh, transfer rates. So let's launch the Arch Linux rolling installer, which is based on Calamari's. We're running 3.2.45, fairly recent. We've got La America, Los Angeles here, English default, all looks good. Let's do a manual partitioning here because we want to use ButterFS. So we can do snapshots. We've got a UFEI system, so GPT. Let's do 600 megabytes FAT32 for our boot EFI partition. We'll label it EFI and check the boot flag. And for the rest of the space, we'll format as BTRFS. That'll be our root partition mounted at root or slash. The file system label will be root and the flag will be root. Click OK here. And so we've got just two partitions, the EFI boot partition and the root partition. So what's nice about the Kalam ISO is it gives you uh, a whole bunch of packages that uh, are available to install, nicely organized in uh, these uh, descriptive uh, uh, containers or categories. So you've got GE Force, AMD drivers, Intel drivers, uh, various desktops. So we'll do uh, GNOME today. This is what it's going to install. It chooses LightDM, uh, which we'll fix later. I also like printing support today. And for the web browsers, Firefox. So yeah, it makes it very nice. You know exactly what you're installing. So my name's Steven, and we'll make this computer called Gnomic. I'll enter my password once and twice. Use the same password for the administrator account. Click next, and this is what it's gonna do. It tells us twice for good measure. And we'll click install. 
And uh, this shouldn't take too long since we're using local mirrors, local to me at least, using that reflector command earlier. So it's creating the partitions, formatting, and then uh, it'll mount the partitions, install the base file system, and then install uh, 213 packages. So we'll let that finish. And let's go ahead and restart. Okay, so here we are. Let's do our Arch Linux boot of our freshly installed system. Uh, Light DM asking, asking for our password. There we go. Screen lock disabled. Screen locking requires the GNOME desktop manager, so we'll need to fix that. So um, let's launch the terminal here. But before we continue there, let me just uh, go to uh, GNOME settings and let's go ahead and click on power. Let's turn off screen blanking for the session. Turn off automatic suspend today for this demonstration. Uh, set the resolution to 1920 by 1080 at 60 hertz. Yeah, it looks a little better. And just to click on about here, we're running uh, GNOME version 40.4 and an XORG session. Cool. All right, so let's make this terminal uh, bigger. First things first, uh, let's take a look at what our file system table looks like. So we've got uh, the root subvolume as slash at, home subvolume as slash at home, then slash at cache and slash at log. So those are four subvolumes that Calamari is automatically set up for us. That's very convenient. Let's take a look at the mirror list here. And looks like our mirror list from the install got carried over to the installed system. Very handy. So we can do a quick uh, kernel version check, 5.14.16. And uh, so that's the latest as of today. Let's synchronize our databases, package databases, with sudo pacman-sy. So that's good. And uh, let's install yay with uh, git clone https colon slash slash aur dot archlinux dot org slash yay. Then cd yay. And then we do a make package uh, dash si package build. And let it do its thing. Let's proceed with the installation of the prerequisite go packages, etc. We'll be using yay a lot today in this install. Okay, so it's already installed. So um, let's uh, remove our build directory and let's type yay to test it. And looks like yay is functional. So let's do a yay dash capital S ZRAMD. So we haven't set up a swap partition. We need to swap to ZRAM. So let's do that by installing the ZRAMD package from the AUR or the Arch user repository. Let it do its thing and it's done. So let's enable a service with sudo systemctl enable now, dash dash now rather, zramd dot service and hit enter. Sets up the link and runs the, uh, the daemon. And now we've got our swap space set up. Swap again is uh, compressed RAM or zram. So let's uh, yay time shift and see what time shift packages are available. So you want time shift and time shift auto snap. 
or options or packages one and two. So we hit enter, return, and hit return again a couple of times and install these two packages. Time shift auto snap automatically takes a system snapshot every time you upgrade a package uh, using a Pac-Man hook. Very convenient. So let's let's launch a time shift and do our first system snapshot. So all these default settings in the setup wizard look good to me. Yeah, all good. Yeah, you definitely want to take a snapshot before you uh, continue to modify the system in any way. So, so the snapshot is created in like less than a second, thanks to the copy on write file system of BTRFS. So that's done. Now we can move on. So let's uh, sudo systemctl disable lightdm.service and uh, let's uh, remove with yay dash capital R lightdm dash gtk dash greeter and lightdm dash gtk dash greeter dash settings and hit enter. That removes those two packages because we want to switch to GDM by installing it with yay dash capital S GDM. And it's already installed, so it's just reinstalling. So, okay, we're good. As you can see here, it created an on-demand snapshot via time shift auto snap. So we already have another snapshot to the system available to us if this goes wrong. So we'll enable it with sudo systemctl enable gdm.service. And there we go. So now we've got gdm. So let's test it by rebooting. So reboot the, uh, the KVM here. There's our gdm uh, reacher. So put my password in there. So that's GNOME Wayland session that we're asking for. So here we are. There's our GNOME 40 desktop. So let's open settings and just double check. Yes, we're now using Wayland. All right, that's good. So let me uh, log out and let me go back to the Xorg um, session. So put in my password and switch to GNOME on Xorg. Hit enter. And then we'll open up the settings utility again, and as you can see, we're all back on X11. We'll keep it at X11 today. So, yep, locking works with the super key and L. So, screen lock works. It's fixed. All right. Moving right along. Let's launch Firefox and do something about these GNOME extensions that we'll need. It's a two-step process this time. Let me type in search for GNOME extensions. And uh, let's select the first link. There we go. So to control GNOME shell extensions using this site, you must install the GNOME shell integration of two parts, browser extension and native host messaging applications. So let's do the browser extension first. Let's click on that. Click Add, allow this extension to run in private windows. Good, that's step one. Step two, we'll check the uh, wiki page for how to install the integrator. Gives us three commands for Arch Linux. So let's open up a terminal here. Make it a little bigger. And I'll see if I can copy paste this. So we'll do this one. 
clone it from the Git repository. The GNOME, the Chrome GNOME shell. I can enter the directory and build a package with make package dash si and uh, let it do its thing. Exactly as the instructions tell us to do. Let's proceed with the installation. All right. Good. So we can remove the build directory for Chrome GNOME shell. And let's close this Firefox tab. And let's reload the page and see if we're operational. It looks like we are. All right. So time to install some extensions that I like to install at least. Your needs may differ. So let's do a no overview at startup. And that's available up to shell version 42. Wow, so we're good for the future. So let's turn it on. So that removes the overview at startup. Next, um, let us install the user themes. That goes up to 41, so we're good for an upgrade as well. So I'll turn that on. And, uh, let's go back to the main page and let's search for um, Arc Menu. Click on that. So the Arc Menu is also good for version 41, which hopefully Arch Linux will release any day now. Okay, that's turned on. We've got our Arc menu over here. Very good. And uh, we'll also want the dash to panel. That's not available for GNOME 41 yet, but I think it'll work fine with uh, GNOME 41. So not too much has changed, so let's uh, enable that. And there we go. We've got our panel down below. Let's close Firefox and so if you right click on settings from the panel, you get the GNOME settings here, right? I mean, so that's handy. It's one way of getting to settings very quickly for GNOME. But um, what we want here is the dash to panel settings, which is separate. And I like to get rid of the applications button on the far left here. I just want the arc menu. So let's get rid of that by toggling the visible button. And let's see, for the arc menu, I'd like to change the layout. I'll choose traditional and whisker, which I'm familiar with from XFCE. The button appearance, I'd like to change the button icon to the arch distro icon. It's a bit small, Compare with the other icons, let's make it 32 like the rest of them. That looks a lot better. So there's our nice arch uh, custom icon for the uh, main system menu. So we've got all the programs that we have currently installed here. Pretty cool. Starting to look a lot less like GNOME already. Maybe that's a good thing. Okay. Let's move on with uh, installing some themes. So yay, Koger gives us a uh, list of uh, candidate packages. I'm interested in the icon and the GTK theme. So those are four and five. I'll just hit enter. And let's enter my password here and let it install. And it's done. So, so that's done. Let's launch tweaks. Yeah, extensions has moved. Yes, so we've taken care of that already earlier. Let's move to appearance. So for the applications, Cogar Dark, Cursor, Cogar Dark, the shell, we want Cogar Dark. go. Um, window title bars, let's enable the maximize minimize buttons here. And for the fonts, 
I'm using LCD screens, so we'll do a subpixel anti-aliasing. The fonts, Cantorel and Source Code Pro, are fine. Let me close the tweaks panel for now. Um, clear the terminal, and let's do a yay dash s, my favorite browser, which is Brave dash bin from the AUR. So let's let it install. So it's downloading the uh, .zip and then converting it to a, a Arch Linux package as part of the installer function. So it's building the package from the .zip and installing it. And there we go. So we've got Brave installed. So um, I noticed that I missed the icons earlier. So let me fix that. Let's make the icons Koger dark. There we go. Nice, nice Koger icons. All right, that's done. So now uh, let's get rid of uh, GNOME Web. I'm not using that in general. I'd like to add to the favorites, Brave. And I also like to add the uh, terminal to the favorites. Okay, so we've got some nice icons down here, calendar, music, folders, uh, GNOME software. Let's set the Brave as default browser. That's what I like to do. Let's switch to the dark mode with uh, typing brave colon slash slash uh, settings. Brave colors shall be dark. There we go. Let's do something about that wallpaper. Let me just go to pexels.com. Let me look for some nice uh, seasonal autumn uh, wallpaper. Let's find a nice background image for us. How about that one? It's like a nice tunnel through the woods. So I'd like to thank Johannes Plenio here. Free to use, no attribution required. So we'll send thanks to Johannes. And uh, let's save it to pictures wallpaper. Click save. There we go. So now, right click on the desktop uh, and change the wallpaper. Let's add the picture that we just downloaded. There it is, it's selected, and voila. Good. Now to me, this makes GNOME a lot more manageable the way I fit set up here. I just need extensions, I'm sorry. Um, Feel free to add your own favorite extensions and themes as you see fit. So there is um, NeoFetch. You can see we're running Vanilla Arch here. Uh, yeah, so you can continue to theme and customize, including the terminal here. I'll be doing that today. But uh, looks like I've got the uh, desktop uh, exactly the way I want it. Looking good to my eyes. Your eyes may differ. So this is how I quickly set up my Arch Linux GNOME desktops lately, and I found it pretty painless. I hope you agree. Thanks so much for watching, and if you want to see more of these, please show your support and smash that like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you won't miss out. Until next time, take care.